I had not even thought about that. And then mm. I was grabbing lunch with Elle and she's like, oh, remember you guys were potentially going to freeze embryos. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, shit. we were. <laughs> I was like, good thing we didn't do that. Yeah. If you have been around since the beginning of our podcast, you have been along for the journey through all of our love highs and our love woes since 2017. Mm. Let's just say it's been a roller coaster of a ride for all of us. Love is hard. And on today's episode, we are going to talk through one of our big life updates and a an update on a relationship. And that person's going to be Miss Janet. So, Janet, why don't we open the floor and allow you to sort of just share your own update with our listeners? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I have been pretty open in sharing about my relationship um, with you all this past year, where I was in the most serious relationship I've ever been in in my adult life. It was... Serious because we were older, we were looking for the same things. We talked about marriage, we talked about building a family together, um, and now I am not in a relationship anymore. So I guess that's what we're going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just want to say thank you, Janet, for being open and vulnerable with today's episode. I know it's really tough to talk about a relationship ending, but let's just kind of give our listeners a little bit of context. So do you mind kind of sharing like... Just a relationship timeline in the dynamic. Yeah. So this relationship was very fast and very serious. We met in August of 2022. And uh, within the first month, you know how it is when you first meet someone and you know that it works? Like you're pretty much seeing each other all the time for like the first month or so. And by the second and third month, we had gotten to know each other to a point where we were like, I think you're my person. Mm. Um, two months in, he said, I love you. Three months in, I said, I love you. Uh, and yeah, we, we talked about, you know, building a family together, thinking, seeing like marriage in the future. And around that time was also the holiday. So we like met everyone in our lives, each other's lives. I went to Chicago to meet his family. Uh, five months in, we moved into a new apartment that was like our place together. And um, right around a year in, uh, we broke up or separated. Hmm. So that's kind of, yeah, like I said, very fast, very serious, but to also provide extra context, I was 37 when we met, he was 44. We both were looking for a life partner. Mm -hmm. So I think in that type of world, in that in that like situation, uh, what we did kind of makes sense, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it's, it's already been a few weeks now since the breakup. Um, we obviously wanted to wait for a time where you felt comfortable to be able to even share this with our listeners. And even just you sharing it, I think it's a lot. Like, you did not have to do this either. Mm -hmm. But I think you, you know, you've pulled people into your relationship and you're like, okay, let me, this is, I just want to share with people, like, how it went. And so that we can kind of, like, close this chapter and kind of yeah. move on, right? I guess, how are you feeling right now? I am feeling, like... A lot of things and then nothing at the same time. I mm -hmm. think I'm one of those people who, uh, when something happens immediately, I very much, the things that stand out to me are the logistics and what things need to be done. Mm -hmm. I often will just automatically not feel my feelings and then kind mm -hmm. of like push them away and then they resurface after the logistics have calmed down. Um, and, uh, so that's kind of, I think now is the time when some of the logistics have been figured out and it's kind of calming down now. Uh, of course, when it happened, I was really sad and I was really frustrated. Uh, you know, I was crying, but then I kind of went straight to, okay, like, what does this mean? What things do we have to figure out? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Jen, I feel like all your feelings are so valid and it just feels like, um, I think when you're going through a breakup, it's, it's messy. Like in, uh, your emotions are messy because you're feeling so many different things and also dealing with tangible things like because you guys live together. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners out there like understand and have been through something like like a breakup like this before. Um, to bring it back to the relationship, do you mind sharing like like why do you in your opinion, why do you think the relationship ended? Yeah, um, I want to preface this by first saying that I have asked for Eugene's permission to talk about some of these things. So um, I wanted to be really mindful of his feelings and um, how I'm like 
sharing. And also, I think just everyone listening knows that this is my perspective. You might get a different one if you if you talk to him. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, like I feel like things ended in an amicable way. So um, it's just it is kind of hard to like think about the details, but I think it's important to talk about. Mm. Like I said, I am someone who has a tendency to kind of maybe repress my emotions and um, maybe just I'm always kind of like, it's okay. It's, you know, I I jump to like getting Mm -hmm. things done and it's fine. Like this is this is what life is and we got to figure it out and deal with it and and move on. But I think it's important that I take the time to like sit through and Mm -hmm. think about the parts that should be legitimately felt and this is a hard question right and it's the one that people always ask like Mm -hmm. oh why didn't it work out Mm -hmm. um and ultimately I think the way that I would sum it up is that we just started feeling a bit disconnected and we started putting in a lot of work to try to to kind of recreate some of that honeymoon connection Mm -hmm. but then also to to feel more to deepen our relationship. And we just realized that our communication styles are very different and we struggled a lot to fully understand each other. Um, Everyone says communication is so important in a relationship and that word itself is like so broad and it's like, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. Um, As an example, and this is obviously very like surface way to break it down, but he is a very like concise and direct communicator. He is an engineer in his profession. So that's kind of the way his brain works. And I am um, a very, I know I'm like generally a more quiet person, but with my friends and when it comes to my partner and working through my feelings and all that kind of stuff, I am a very verbose person. (laughs) I talk a lot. Um, I tend to go on tangents. Uh, I'm also a more like kind of polite and soft communicator. That's just Mm -hmm. my, I'm not, I, I work on trying to be more direct, but generally I err on the side of kind of being more soft and encouraging and stuff like that. So what would often happen is he would get kind of lost and frustrated when we were trying to talk and I would get hurt. Mm. <laughs> and that's this oversimplification, but that was kind of some of the dynamic, right? And as much as we tried to work through that, um, at the end of the day, that core way of communicating that I I have and the way that he has, it's such a core part of who we are as people. It's mm-hmm. really hard to change. Um, so that was kind of ultimately, I think, the leading force. But when, and when your when your communication is like hard and it's mm-hmm. not connecting, overall you just start to feel disconnected and you just start to feel more and more disconnected. Mm. So I think ultimately, like that's really what what for us kind of um, felt like, you know, this is, this is not, not working. And in terms of, cause I also want to address the fact that, you know, it feels like a year is not that long and it takes time to get to know people, but we had gotten to know each other to a point where we thought the amount of work to put in here and our chances that we have set up for success, meaning our willingness to compromise those core parts of us, Mm. it just felt more and more like, it's we're not gonna we're not gonna end in a place where we both feel truly like content, mm. um, and and so that was ultimately like yeah it was a hard decision to make. Wow, that makes a lot of sense when you're when you're saying because I think like I think what you said about the communication is such a broad thing that they make it sound so simple, but it really isn't because communication feeds into every component of your dynamic and your relationship. So if that one thing is a little maybe not fine tuned, it could set everything off. Yeah, and it's not just like in words, it's also in like, um, I don't know, body language, small mm-hmm. things like behaviors and it reflects your values. So it was an oversimplification of what I shared, but I think that just the more of mm-hmm. the nuances of communication we learned about each other, it's like we were just so different and it's so hard to like compromise and make that person like understand and for you to understand yeah no that makes sense yeah no I just wanted to give you props for like summarizing that because I feel like with when it comes to emotions it's so hard to Mm -hmm. sort of narrow down exactly what it is that went wrong but clearly you have you've had like time to think about it and you did a really good job of saying exactly not just like communication but it's like what it was within the communication Mm -hmm. that didn't work out and I think that's really really hard to do especially after a breakup Especially because it's like sometimes you just want to move on from it. Be like, I don't know, it just didn't work out. But like, yeah. you clearly put in the work to like really understand why. Oh, thank yeah. you. I mean, I think this is also one of like, I um, who knows? Talk to me in a week. <laughs> My feelings might have changed, but ultimately, that's like what mm. that's where I think it mm-hmm. has gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think Janet, knowing you, obviously we talked about dating so many times. We shared our relationship stories in the last few years, so I feel like 
I know your behavior a little bit. So mm-hmm. I want to say that like when you obviously you're going through this relationship um, and I know you're someone that kind of you have you'll, your walls will come up sometimes depending on like certain situations. Do you feel like throughout the relationship there were moments you were like that was like an inkling like, oh, this may not work out and cause you to like maybe put your walls back up or just any yeah, like yeah. signals yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, this is where that, what is that saying? It's like everything is 2020 in, in retrospect or like in retrospect, you look at something and you understand like, oh, why didn't I see that? Or why didn't, mm-hmm. but when you're going through it, one thing that kind of feels off could be like, oh, but that should be something we can work through. Mm. Right. That was the vision that I had going forward through the relationship was because it's, it's like, you know that for sure when you first meet someone, whether you want to be realistic or not, there's going to be a honeymoon period. Like that's just the way that it works. It's a new person. It's exciting. You're learning about each other. And then as you really start to be in the relationship and you're living together and you're trying to figure each other out, like, um, you know, more, more kind of things will come up. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, like moving in together as fast as we did, um, it was a deliberate choice. We're like, we, th- I think you're my person. Like, how can we test this out? Like, mm-hmm. let's just move forward. Uh, but that's also that's like the first kind of thing that's like, it's going to be challenging. Like living with a new person when you've both been living by yourself is already going to be challenging enough. Mm-hmm. Having to figure out to move together, all of that. So that I think, which was about, that was six months into our relationship. And now we were starting to kind of like have certain differences. And um, it was hard also to separate, is this a roommate difference Mm. or is this like a relationship difference? So Mm. there was definitely like roommate tiffs, um, but we tried to like let those go and kind of be like, okay, this is just something that takes time to communicate, to get to know. But of course, when it comes to like communication styles, there were also relationship things that would happen, right? Like Mm. talking about um, aspects of our relationship because I am someone that's a little bit more like verbose and kind of, you know, like I'll bring stuff up in the moment. I kind of just want to randomly dive into a deep conversation without meaning to or thinking about it. Mm. And he's a very like structured, concise person. So he'd be like, hey, can we talk about this later? And then I would be like, okay, that's that's fair. Mm. Um, But then it was maybe I'm not not, uh, the most like, natural compartmentalizer it was like harder for me to adjust to that but we tried to work around that and we said okay we'll set up then like weekly check-ins like set time for us to come together and talk about our relationship and then also because then we started feeling disconnected it was like set time to either go on a date or talk and and have like relationship talks um and then when that wasn't like really working we did talk about potentially trying couples therapy Mm -hmm. why do you feel like that didn't work like the more intentional every week you know i know on the calendar it was always like wednesday 6 p.m there was like a meeting time yeah for you two that were that was blocked off on the calendar yeah i mean i think firstly we did start with just doing date nights every week and it was fun but then anything that we had serious talk about you don't want to like kill the the fun mood with like the serious conversation so we altered to them like every other and at that time also we were starting to he was getting more comfortable with like off the cuff like having deeper conversations and stuff right but ultimately it's just like and I I still can't quite put my finger on it I think it just it seemed like when we would come together to talk about things because we still had different communication styles Mm. it still like wasn't quite getting through Mm -hmm. and I think that's why we thought about the couples therapy Mm -hmm. if this is a Mm -hmm. communication thing Mm -hmm. but by the time we got to that point I think we both realized that like at the core this is who we are Mm. as you know like yes we can work on trying to change the way I talk or like Mm. my the way that I generally like need to communicate or how I communicate Mm. but I think that's a big part of who I am as a person and that's a big part of who he is as a person so I think reflecting on that and then also just some of the things that you can't quite articulate but you just kind of in your gut start to feel like man I think we differ in this way and it would be more work to put in Mm. so by the time we got to talking about really trying couples therapy we were both in our gut kind of feeling like we're feeling more disconnected more as if like the the cards are stacked against us like if we Mm. wanted to go and try to make this work it it may not have it may it may take a lot of work to get just a subpar outcome Mm. and um and that's a hard thing to do but uh, I think for both of us, we were just at that place where, um, you know, he he had also mentioned if we're going to do this, like we need to be, it's hard to go into couples therapy if you're not all in. Mm. And that just, um, yeah. So so ultimately it just kind of, um, that's where it ended. And I, th- oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say like, I think it's actually, um, 
I, I think we hear this a lot in relationships. And I don't know if you feel this way, but I think it sounds like you go reach the point where like it actually should be being with each other should actually be easier than what it what it feels like right now. There should be a little level of ease. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I don't know yeah, how to yeah. describe it. Yeah, yeah. There should be a level of ease. Like I think, and if you have challenges, like those other things will keep things light and together. Right. Mm, I see. Um, I did also consider the fact that you know. This year has not been the easiest for either of us individually. Mm. It was a high pressure and really important year for him personally in his career. Yeah. For me, um, as much as like, I love what we do, right? Mm -hmm. And I love our work, but still adjusting to being someone who owns their own business, there are, emotion there are emotional and mental and even just like workload things that are unique and different that I am still adjusting to that I realize now being in a relationship my partner has to be okay with and adjust to. So mm -hmm. we, I think we're, I don't think either of us were our best selves this year, mm. but when you're in a permanent life partnership, that's gonna happen all the time. And that's what we talked about is mm. like, yes, you know, we're, we're both kind of going through separately, like challenging things emotionally or personally that makes it harder for us to show up for each other in this relationship. but that's what life is gonna be like. And we're gonna have even harder challenges than this. So did those things play a role? Yes, but I think when we made that assessment at the end, we're like, but that's not, it doesn't feel like, we feel like it's more than just that, mm. that is, is the challenge. And also I just wanna add, I know like, um, when I said about the ease thing, I do also feel like you bring this up a lot to us, but you guys are at a certain stage in your life where I think sometimes, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like when you're like maybe in your early 20s and you're like working mm. through a relationship, you have t quote unquote more, more time, time. Yeah. to get to, let's say you want to do a marriage or like have a family. But I think with you, you and Eugene, you're like, let's be really realistic, like where we are with our timeline too about this, right? Yeah. Like we could put in the work and see where we are in a year or two, but then we both lose a year or two mm. <laughs> in potentially finding our people. And, mm. you know, I, I said, I do want a family and I do, I've learned a couple things, which I'll share later mm -hmm. after about that. But, um, but yeah, as a woman, and I think as a guy dating a woman who is older, like that is also something we mm. consider. I know that many of us care about our health. We embrace the latest workout routines, we try the latest supplements, and we follow a bunch of experts on TikTok and Instagram. But when was the last time we actually went to a real doctor? Like, in real life, with real medical experience and a stethoscope. If it's been so long that you really have to think so hard about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc, the free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. I personally love how convenient and easy ZocDoc makes a usually daunting task. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Their doctors all have verified reviews from actual, real patients, and once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. Go to ZocDoc.com ABG and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash ABG. ZocDoc.com slash A. B G. Hi everyone, it's Helen here. You've been hearing me talk about Pampers for a while now on this podcast, the diaper brand that we've been using for our soon-to-be two-year-old. And for anyone out there who is still in the diaper phase of parenthood, this one is for you. We've been using Pampers Swathers and it's given us back several minutes of our lives. Why? Because Pampers Swathers prevents up to 100% of leaks, even blowouts. Meaning we are not constantly changing our baby out of his clothes, cleaning up the mess afterwards, and doing several more loads of laundry than we prefer to. Swaddler's Diapers has a blowout barrier, which is an innovative back pocket in the diaper to help prevent messes from coming out. Pampers Swaddler's is always, always in stock in our household because when our baby is asleep for more than 11 hours, you know we gotta have an extra absorbent diaper for dry nights and less wake-ups in the middle of the night. With Pampers Swaddler's, you can rest assured that you have superior leak protection while keeping baby's skin healthy. For trusted protection, trust Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand. I think looking back on the relationship too, one question that I have, because this, this is uh, something that we were thinking about, about you moving in with him so quickly, because you guys moved so fast with this mm. relationship and in, yeah. it, because of the timing, right? It's, it was kind of like, I want to figure out if this is going to work and I want to figure it out more immediately. But now I guess just as maybe tips or you know suggestions for people out there who are jumping into this like fast, fiery type of relationship, 
because of also timeline. In hindsight, would you have done the same of moving in with him so quickly? I would. So for me, yes. Mm. But um, like it was it made the relationship harder. Mm. And I don't know. And that depends on the person of whether I think it's like I think we learned about each other fast. <laughs> which yeah. is what which was what, what the intention was but it makes the experience of getting used to being in a relationship and making it work a little harder mm. but I don't um so I think it's it kind of is up to you if you want to take the like if you want to fast track it that could af- affect your fun and your ease in the relationship which could maybe affect how connected you feel with the person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but ultimately I think if you're older probably you're you're not like on your values list the fun stuff in that way, maybe is not as high. So mm. um, I, th- I would say it depends on your age. And if you really want a family and you're older, I would I would probably say yes. I mean, it depends on so many other things too. Yeah, yeah. But, but generally, yeah. yeah. I just remember that was one thing where that we were was like, should thing. she do yeah. it? Should she not? Oh, yeah, they were really good friends about this because I understand. I think if your friend is like, hey, I just met this guy and then we're going to move in together and we said, you know, we're like so, and they're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who Did is this I remember person? exactly what happened? You literally told me one week, he gave me his keys. The next day we're moving together. I'm like, what? <laughs> But yeah, that was a moment. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I will support you in whatever you do. <laughs> and, I was, uh, and I did this. Yeah. <laughs> and along the same lines of that question, like the the fact is that you guys were living together, right? Mm-hmm. When this breakup happened. So what has been the current state of, I guess, your relationship? Has Did it end on a good or a bad term? I mean, you said it was amicable, so assuming it was good. But like living situation wise also, like how did you handled that Hmm. us being together and living together meant that this kind of breakup or conversation it wasn't like a we met together one time and had a meeting had a conversation that ended right it was kind of drawn out Mm. so of course when we made that final cut and that and that final like conversation like I was really sad and I was really frustrated and I was crying and we were both just like oh my gosh um but at the same time it didn't come as a surprise because we had both been talking about this for a while Mm. And uh, but then, like I said, we went kind of straight to like logistics and trying to work through it. Um, However, now that I've had some time to think about the emotions and even maybe what was going on in my head emotionally during that time, um, I think it's hard to not feel like you were foolish in in rushing into something with someone or Mm -hmm. to question, did I did I give enough? Did I try hard enough? Mm -hmm. Like it's really easy to be hard on yourself to in terms of and I think especially as we get older and um and if you're looking for a partnership that you're wondering like what is wrong with me what did I not do right um and uh I think there's a lot that we can look about the other person as well but the older that you get the more you start to reflect also on what have I done um what did I not do Mm -hmm. and I think those those are the things for us individually as I was hurting and being frustrated I saw him hurting and being frustrated and that makes it really hard to see someone you care about like Mm -hmm. um it wasn't about me hurting him or him hurting me it's uh about knowing that we're kind of like internally both struggling with this in a way that's more complicated than just like here's someone that um it didn't work out with it's like we're working through our own personal Mm. relationship with love and relationships in general um and you know we were trying to work on building like a family unit together and he was really close to his dog toby and i got really close to toby and so some part of leaving that felt sad to think like did we just put so much time and energy and focus for the past year for nothing and I know logically mm-hmm. that's not the case, but emotionally that sometimes can be what it feels like. Um, and so, like I said, that's those are the things that I process after. I think in the moment, because I get so logistics focused, we were like, okay, well, we signed a lease together until uh, June. So we that's like we still we've only made it through like barely half the lease. And it was complicated because we both were like, I think neither of us wants to stay here. We both want to move out. But financially, that didn't make the most sense. Mm. Uh, to break a lease costs money. And, 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 you know, there's like concessions that we got from like moving in here that you'd have to pay back. And so we ultimately decided that he was going to stay in the apartment and take over the lease and that I was going to find um, a different place to live. And also the logistics of, you know, we, um, we film for ABG in – you know, the, uh, using the facilities that are associated with this apartment. So there were a lot of like logistical conversations that were not the most fun to have and can get, can be a little like 
challenging and loaded when you're still processing mm. your emotions. But we got through them. And, um, you know, I think for in terms of the living situation, I was trying to find a different place for the rest of the year. You know, I think I, I made a decision that I'm going to figure out where I'm going to be in three months and then kind of reassess again. Uh, and as many of you knew before I moved in, I had a space in downtown L.A. that I put on Airbnb. So the timing worked out that no one was there. I went in, but someone booked it for the next three months until the end of the year. So I was on this like scramble to find a different place to live and then found a place. But there was a gap of like a week. So then I had to find another place. And I kind of like had a moment where I reflected. And I'm like, my God, this past year, I will have had like five different addresses. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, so yeah. I was like, damn, I like talk about like, no, I don't know. That's true. Yeah. Being all over the place. But um, and ultimately, though, I think given some time apart from the emotions and from the logistics, once everything is settled and everyone feels good, I th- I I will say that we feel good because or I, I will say that in my definition, it ended on good terms because I still care about him a lot as a person. He still cares about me a lot as a person. The ultimate reason why we ended was kind of like, hey, we don't feel like we have a compatibility in certain ways. It's mm-hmm. not because I think you're a bad person or you've done you've wronged me in like really harsh, irreversible ways. If there were ways that we hurt each other in the relationship, which there were, um, it was always like, I kind of understand where you're coming from. That's Mm -hmm. not where I would do it or how I would do it or that's not where I'm coming from. And it's hard for me to be with someone that's going to do it that way. But like, I understand where you're coming from, you know, Mm -hmm. for both going one way and the other way. Wow. I'm just like listening to you and I'm like, if I were to break up with someone, I'd want it to be Janet because she's like, (laughs) she's Mm -hmm. she's so good. Like just how logical brained you are, but also emotionally like understanding Mm -hmm. of like the things that happen you're not just like because I know after this breakup you were very much like okay go 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 like how are we going to fix that like what Mm -hmm. are we where am I living what's the situation but like you you're also thinking through what it was about the emotional part of the relationship that didn't work and you're really able to like put into words and not blame him Mm. it's more just like we were just not compatible I think a lot of times people would be like oh yeah like he was a dick you know yeah yeah, but like you're you're just like we were just not compatible but I still really care about him as a person Mm mm-hmm so thank you. Well, I, I will say that this is with time of reflection. And if you if we were filming this while I was having the conversation yeah. with him, it was a little bit more of a blubbering mess. Um, yeah. And uh, I noticed that that, that might have been weird for me to be like, if I were to break up with someone, it'd be no, Janet. No, no, no. So you know what I meant? <laughs> I you know what I meant? Like, yeah, yeah. She, she's I a do, good. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> she's. Janet's- like you wouldn't make me feel like shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's, it's like, now I say that, I don't know, maybe in the conversations with him, like, I don't think, I don't recall doing anything specific, but I'm sure there were ways that I looked at him or comments that I made that maybe like were not so. Which is you know. like when it's in the heat of the moment, yeah, that yeah. stuff happens. And like, whenever I get into an argument with Philip, I'm like, yo, sometimes it's just our chemistry, you know, there's just, yeah, there's yeah. just like synapses fire, fire. or whatever that are just <laughs> yeah. like, they just gotta like, yeah. night yeah. and then they will come back down but yeah, like some yeah. things were said that maybe shouldn't have been said. yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah. i mean so you posted something recently on your stories which i thought was really funny <laughs> this meme and it says if you set someone free and they come back that means that nobody wanted them so set them free again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something like that do you remember seeing that when i saw that i don't know if you guys had broken up already maybe you I yeah think we you had, had already had, i was like yeah. damn janet okay <laughs> oh it's funny because i yeah I, I i shared that not as me thinking that if he would come back because yeah. i realized that that sounds kind of like like a dig at him a, a little dig? bit yeah, yeah, yeah it was a dig um <laughs> i just thought it was funny because the meme is usually like if you set someone free um, and or it's like, like if you let someone go and they come back then, like then trash. you know it was really then you know it was like meant to be, meant to be uh, fair, right? but yeah. basically this one took it the other way where it's like if they come back no one wants them so set them for you again <laughs> <laughs> get on with your your good self yeah yeah I just thought that was funny um, yeah but um, okay so yeah. my question <laughs> is if he were to come back oh is there any possibility of a future that you still see with him? Yeah. Well, I think maybe explaining why, um, because I, I think at this point there would, I, I don't imagine him coming back. And that's why it's like not a mm. dig at him. It's a dig at that general, um, that general way of thinking, I guess. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, we ultimately ended for reasons that I think are pretty like, it's not, I mean, yes, I, I do think people can change, situations can change. But for us, it was like, hey, fundamentally, we're not working. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and also because we're older and him knowing that I want kids. And like I said, taking the perspective of the guy, I know he's like, it would, I don't think he would 
cross that boundary to mm. want to try again because he would be like, am I going to waste her time? Mm. You know, mm-hmm. that's I mean, that's mm-hmm. me maybe mm-hmm. projecting mm-hmm. and thinking if you're an older dude who's, um, you know, been in a recent breakup, maybe you can resonate or like share in the comments if that seems accurate. Yeah. But um, I don't I don't think he would come back. It would have to be me, maybe me going back. But mm. I, like I said, because we were like, this is not working for a fundamental reason. Yeah. Mm. Um, it just doesn't. I don't think I don't think that would uh, that I, would happen. I think also because it was so mutual, this like understanding between the two of you that I can see it being a very much like this is settled. Mm. Like, let's move on from this kind of a scenario mm. yeah. unless there is a big life change for one reason or another. I guess I do want to ask because you've mentioned many times your timeline about like starting a family and all of this. And I know there was so much pressure placed on this relationship because we're like, okay, maybe he's the one. There was a potential of like freezing an embryo together, all of this. Yeah. Like yeah. now with this relationship not having worked out, I'm like, if it's not too much to ask, like how do you feel about that aspect of your life or like have things change in terms of like how you see it and want to approach this part of like the family planning side of your life? Yeah, that was real. I had not even thought about that. And then mm-hmm. I was grabbing lunch with Elle and she's like, oh, remember you guys were potentially going to freeze embryos. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah, we <laughs> were. <laughs> I was like, good thing we didn't do that. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. The Yeah, it was and it was kind of like we were like on this we were on the momentum and, and I remember him and I looked into their I don't we're like, maybe we should pause this a little mm. bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was a very fast trajectory. And what I've taken away from this that was uh, that was really insightful for myself personally is, yes, I talk about wanting to get married. And yes, I talk about wanting to have a family. And I do want those things. But I don't think that I like need them to live a happy life. Mm. And that is the thing that I've taken away is that like, um, you know, you have to, like, I I need to find, and I think he thought about this too. It's like, you need to find the right person that you feel comfortable on on wanting to start a family with. And uh, if that doesn't happen for me, I think just maybe because of maybe the core of who I am as a person, like I've not been the kind of person who dreamed about a home in the future and marriage and my wedding. I just, as I got older, kind of like, yes, I, I would like those things, right? Mm. Um, I think that if there was one thing that I do maybe more like fully obsess over and that would really be hard for me to live a happy life without is um, having a sense of like, what am I leaving the world? I guess it's like your legacy. Your legacy mm. kind of, yeah. yeah, and for a lot of people that is their family and their kids. For me, I've always looked at my work, you wanna call it work or like whatever it is that you do in the world to help other people or that that is of benefit to others, that is, I guess I've always looked at my work that would be my legacy versus my mm. family. Um, as I got older, I started shifting. And I'm like, oh, it could be, you know, it doesn't have to be just the work. And like, ideally, in, in an ideal world, you can have both, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if it was absolutely necessary for me to choose, I'm not so tied to the idea of needing marriage and kids, if that makes sense. So do I want it? Yes. And, and I want it pretty, like, pretty seriously. But to me, it's not the end all be all. And that was really reassuring to mm. like it makes me feel I can put a little bit less pressure yeah, on yeah. Us, if that makes sense yeah, yeah. whoa yeah. I'll be honest this is new news for me yeah I guess I've never ar- yeah. I never articulated it in that way yeah because I always was like oh I don't know me or like I don't care about weddings or like yeah yeah I want kids but then I realized like I think it's very easy for people when you're hearing it in this when I'm thinking about my timeline my life is going to all about thinking about fertility. Yeah, yeah. But that's because it's like, I feel like right now I need mm. to figure out what I want to do with it. But in the bigger scheme of my life, is that, does that mean I'm like desperately want kids? Mm. Mm. Not always. Just I want the opera, I want the option. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. And yes, I have baby fever. Maybe, I think it's biological and I want those things. But uh, yeah, I guess that's. Mm. <laughs> I feel like at the end of any relationship, it always feels kind of like doomy and gloomy Mm -hmm. and just kind of like, but I think there's also moments where you can say to yourself, oh, I really appreciated this relationship, specifically this one for something that you're taking away that you either appreciated or were grateful for. Is there anything with this relationship where you feel like you're taking that piece away from it? Mm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for those of you following along on my romantic journey or lack thereof for the past many years, I was yearning to be in a relationship for so long and I got that opportunity. Um, I was able to, you know, have 
a person to go ice skating with during Christmas mm. and like to uh, I mean those are all like surface like fun things but they were really nice to have um, but on a deeper level I think having a partner whom you could go home to and you would share um, you know frustrations with and be there and support each other all of the aspects of being in a partnership and and learning to love someone because that is a learned skill, mm. <laughs> right? Learning to not only know how to give love to that person the way they need to be loved, but also how to like learn and receive love and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was given the chance to be able to do that with someone. Even the hard things, like having those hard relationship conversations. Mm. I think when you go through something like that, you do form a stronger bond with someone, right? Mm. When you have to like fight through things. And so I was given the opportunity to reach a level of intimacy mm. that I hadn't in a long time mm. I really like that answer me too to jump off what Helen's question was about like what's the takeaway or what's something you got from the relationship what is something you feel like you learned about yourself in terms of what you want in your next relationship mm. so this is an interesting thing that I realized um, from conversations with you ladies mm -hmm. but also with my good friend Drushti um, who's known me for many years and, um, you know, I always had said, especially like on different episodes, like I need someone with really high EQ who's really good at perceiving their emotions and, the, you know, like leading those emotional conversations because I always felt deficient in those. Mm -hmm. I always felt like mm -hmm. I, I need someone to do the guiding. And after this relationship, I realized like I've grown a lot and I actually can be someone who takes the initiative to have those conversations, to bring things up, to guide the conversation. Like I, I'm capable of those things. Mm. So I shouldn't be like, I need someone to do that for me in the relationship. Mm. Um, and so that is kind of, that was a big thing for me. Like I think moving forward mm. is like, I, I mean, of course I want someone who's gonna be open emotionally and all those things, but um, I've learned that maybe I can do some of that myself too. Mm. That's a very powerful takeaway. That's a very actually. good yeah. takeaway. Yeah. Personally, as your friend watching you go through this relationship, even for myself, I kind of can sense the things that you're learning about what you actually want. And it, it's kind of like, this sounds really weird, but kind of amazing to see you pinpoint it even more. Because mm -hmm. I think me and you navigated dating together and to see you, like, we were starting a relationship together. But I, I think but every relationship you go through, these instances allow you to, like, better understand what you actually truly need in a, in a partner. And I, and I, through our conversations, I feel like I'm. Str I, I, I sense a stronger sense of that from you mm. without going into details. Is there anything different that you want to be looking for in another relationship? Different from what your, this past relationship has provided for you? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, honestly, I no longer try to like to think about what kind of person I would want or mm. all of those things. I think more about now, like once I'm in the relationship, what would I want to do differently? Mm -hmm. And I, I think like I could have done a better job and I want to about maintaining, deliberately maintaining my own independent activities and things. Mm. Uh, I think because it had been a long time since I had been in a relationship and also because we were on this like expedited timeline, it felt like, um, I just dove right in and I literally just like started staying at his place all the time and just mm. kind of fully merged my life into his. Mm. And uh, it, I think it would have been much healthier and uh, for me to maintain a lot of my own uh, activities and priorities like I kind of because I was moving spaces I kind of just like stopped doing yoga you know mm. I wasn't as like regular about um about the yoga and also about the meditation and kind of a lot of these ritualistic things that I would do that were of personal like interest to me mm. and he brought that up too he's like you should go do more of your own things but just like my own natural was like this is what my focus is on right now I need mm. to like figure out and like try to make this work and um and I and I think it's important to learn to like maintain better balance. Mm. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into our episodes, now in video format. For many years, you all listened to us weekly, and as much as we love creating audio content, how much better is it now that you can actually also see us? From photos of new merch, sharing snippets of our lives with you through social media, to now inviting you all into our weekly episodes on video, visuals play a big role in allowing us to connect with you all. If you are also someone who is drawn to visual content and are finding that your phone is just no longer cutting it for getting the photos and videos that you want, check out the Nikon Z30, a compact, lightweight setup for content creators. It's easy to use and has features like a front-facing screen 
screen, crisp 4K video, and worry-free autofocus, even in low light. The Z30 captures high-quality stills and videos and is designed to inspire your best work with easy operation and smart connectivity. There's even a creator's accessory kit that pairs with the Z30. To learn more, check out NikonUSA.com slash podcast Z30. That's NikonUSA.com slash podcast Z30. Well, I'm sure a question a lot of listeners are curious about and might be kind of too soon, but let me know. What is your outlook on dating now? And like, do you feel like it's too soon to jump back in or when you see yourself tipping your toes? Yeah. Um, Yeah. My mind right now is fully on myself. Mm. I feel like this was, like I said, it was a fast, but it was a serious relationship. So I, I need to, I need time to process. I need time to like, um, kind of, it's not just heal, but I, I think because it was so much in such a short period of time, like I put a lot and I know he put a lot of ourselves in this relationship and we worked at it. I know I think. And so I just feel like I need some time to like relax, Mm -hmm. um, and also unwind and come back to myself because when you're trying to make the relationship work, you're working on trying to compromise and trying to like figure your your, uh, lives together as a couple. Now that that's not happening, I need to focus on now what is, who is Janet again and what does she do and how is her life going to be? I think there, there's a part of that that can feel very inspiring and stimulating for myself. And I'm sure for him too, because to some degree why it was ending was us feeling like we couldn't make it work. Mm. And um, so that I'm not even thinking about dating right now. I'm not saying I'm like, it's out of the question, but my my deliberate focus is going to be on figuring myself out, and and working on on my own things. Mm. So. I love that so much for you. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And I know that's like a very positive like you know takeaway from this whole experience. I know that like no matter what, after a breakup, there's always going to be this part where it's just like, oof, I need some self care. You know, like I need to be taking care of myself just to make sure that mentally, physically, I am in a good place. How are you doing that for yourself right now? That's a good question. I was like, have I been doing that for myself? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I think you're still, the thing is you're still in it, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. we know this as like friends too, it's like finding a place to live. And there's like a lot of, I'm like, girl is going, mercury, mercury is in retrograde. <laughs> it's in the microwave. It's in the microwave. It's in the microwave. And it's oh my heating God. up. As your friend, I know it has not been easy, but I'm curious how you are taking care of yourself during this time. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it hasn't really been in practices so much as it um, or behaviors as it has been in like my mental state. Um, I just keep thinking about what is meant for you will not pass you by. Mm. And that is kind of the the anthem or the theme that I'm keeping in my in my mind as we move past this period uh, where it's still kind of like still working through the healing and, and transition. So yeah. Yeah. I know right now it's maybe hard for you to think about this and I, I could see why right now it's like hard to find time to work on this when you're like transitioning. But are there things that you maybe have listed in your head mentally? Like, mm-hmm. I want to do this eventually for myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I know you mentioned like a retreat maybe in Arizona. Like, I wasn't sure there's something like eventually you want to get to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as... I was like, this is kind of random. I wanted to take the heels class. Yeah. <laughs> Part of it was like to work on like... I guess like there's a little bit of the empowerment aspect of being Mm. a woman and feeling sexy because, um, you know, I mean, a lot of what society tells you about being an older woman has the opposing messaging. So um, Mm. but some of that is just for fun for me to kind of do. And honestly, I do want to get back into yoga. I know personally like that is and that's like not as like a ooh fun like vacation type thing but I think just whether it's yoga classes or doing more videos um at home practices like Mm. I just that is that's something that I know um always heals me when I'm going through times of transition so gonna put a deliberate focus on that and then maybe add in some more fun types of movement like yeah I I again love this for you because I think it's you're going back to things that ground you and make you excited and make you you. I think it's also things you're good at too. Yeah. Right. You're like such a great dancer. So it's Aww. like getting more into that and, yeah. and like unlocking Maybe a building new level up of a dancing. little bit of confidence. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of confidence gets lost after a break. Cause you're yeah. like, cause you're rocked. Yeah. You're questioning everything, yes. but let's, 
let's get that back. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that is a good thing. I'm trying. I'm focused on what are things that are going to make me feel better about myself and build yeah. up that sense of yeah. self more. So if you have any ideas, yeah. let if you want, I'm going to yoga tomorrow, and I'm really bad at it. You'll, well, you'll <laughs> for sure be really good at it if you want to. It's go. not. I mean, I'm not, I I don't do those things to feel. I mean, if I take the heels class, I'm probably going to be in the back. I'm scared of. Oh yeah, for just sure. because you know the movements. But yeah, like, yeah. The being able to be sexy. That's the part I want to work on because mm. I don't feel I'm not. I'm a little bit more like enclosed and shy, and I want to. Oh work girl, on I'm pretty sure you can kill that <laughs> yeah. dance i said i help you but i was like i was like i feel like i need help too <laughs> <laughs> well how do you feel janet now that we're this episode was kind of like looming over our heads for a little bit because yeah. you're like okay i have to sit down think about this mm -hmm. but now we have reached the end of the episode how do you feel i do feel relieved it's always a little nerve-wracking when you want to talk about something that is going to be emotional uh, because you're not sure how it's going to come off or if you're going to say things mm -hmm. in a certain way. But I feel relieved and I also feel like it was cathartic for me to to think about these questions and um, and to share them. And yeah, so I feel like a sigh of relief. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's way. in the way, table's in the way. Yeah. Um, do you have any parting words you want to say to our listeners before we wrap up? Let's see. I think I would just like maybe that message of what's meant for you will not pass you by. So if you're also going through mm -hmm. a breakup um, or like a challenging time romantically, I think both that quote kind of works in both in any situation where you're maybe just struggling in your love life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What's like meant that. for you will not pass you by. Yeah. Well, thank you, Janet, so much for sharing this personal part of your life with everyone our listeners out there um and thank you for your courage just just to tell the story thank you ladies um if you're also maybe like going through a breakup or you're dating you're and you're looking for people to talk to i think our discord has a really lively chat uh channel called single and dating or if you're in a relationship we also have a channel there that i see a lot of conversations going on if you're looking for people to talk to, so check out our Discord. We're also out every Thursday uh, for our main show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. And you catch our mini shows on Tuesday. Um, but with that, we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.